This is the Hyperflame Fire Cadet Camping Stove from Coleman. A nice hot burner with a nice sleek profile, easy to pack in your car. Let's check it out. Hit it. Ben from Snow is here folks with uh, another stove in the Hyperflame range from Coleman. This is the Fire Cadet Stove. It's a nice sleek sort of version um, of the stove with these really hot burners. This guy has 11,000, about 11,500 BTU per burner, 22,000 BTU total for the stove here. Um, and it's a really uh, good option for, for boiling water really quickly. Simmer, we'll have a look shortly, but there's a fine line with the simmer on these guys, but it is possible. And when you buy the stove, obviously you get the stove here. Now I have to excuse this stove, it's looking a little bit battered. It's had a good life on the shop floor, um, but you get the stove as it is here with the lid attached. Now you also get a regulator. Now this regulator must be used with the stove at all times. You can use a few different gas bottles with this, which I'll go into shortly. No matter what gas bottle you use, you must have this in the system. Given that this has to be in the system, it also means you can't attach this to a regulated gas supply in a caravan system. Um, it, it needs to come from an unregulated gas supply into this regulator here. Now this screws in the side of the stove here and just hangs out the side. Once you've got this attached, you've then got the option of two different gas bottle styles. You can use these disposable propane cylinders here, which will screw into the um, into the regulator here. If we take the cap off of this, I can't get it off at the moment, but that will screw into there. And just sits on the side of the stove like this to give us a nice lightweight option for, um, for our camp setup. Alternatively, you do get one of these hoses with your stove here. Now this is a, a hose with a, a BOM fitting on one end here that fits into the regulator here. And then the other end is a 3 8 BSP fitting, which we can then attach to a standard gas bottle like this with a 3 8 BSP opening on top. Alternatively, you can get different hoses that have the BOM fitting and also go to a POL fitting to allow us to attach to large nine cylinder gas bottles like this guy here. So perfectly viable to run this stove off of both these bottles and the disposable 450 gram cylinders here. Now before I fire it up uh, and show you how hot it is or how easy it is to light, I just want to run through some of the features of the stove. So we'll close it up here and we'll talk about dimensions. Now when it's closed up like this, it measures about 60 centimeters in length, about 38 centimeters in depth from the outside of the handle here to the back of the, the bracket at the back of the stove here and around about 13 centimeters in height. Well, there's a nice little latch on the front here that just unclips and slides down and out of the way, it attaches to that, the lid opens up and when it's opened up like this, the sort of space you'd need to fit it into measures around about, uh, or 60 centimeters in length still. It's about 45 centimeters in depth from the handle here to sort of where the top of the lid finishes here. So that's the sort of space you want, but you do have a little bit of flexibility there. And height wise, it's about 39 centimeters from the base of the foot here to the top of where the, um, the lid opens up on the top here. And weight wise, it's just under seven kilos. So uh, not the lightest stove in the market, but it's certainly um, perfectly, um, it's a good weight for the, the, the versatility you get with a stove like this. I'll just open the stove up again and do a bit of a tour around. Now there is something missing from this stove and it's hard life it's had on the shop floor. It's missing the little support stand that's usually riveted into here. It's a little metal stand that hooks into here and just gives this lid a little bit of extra support there. But the lid itself does stand fairly upright without the need for that. There are oversized brackets on the side. So you can see this thing creates a windshield at the back, but what's missing on this stove are the traditional um, windshields that we would normally see on each side here, which is not an omission that uh, Coleman have thought about that and that's um, accounted for with these sort of, the, it's both a stove stand and a windshield here. So if we look around the side here, we can see there are panels here that allow breathability, but they also cut the wind down. And when this sits over the top here, it protects the flame inside here and serves both as the pot stand and the windbreak. And what that allows is extra large pots to be used on top of the stove. You can see this can, the handle can come out the side here if I like, or if I've got two large stoves, this can overhang the side here and I'm not impeded by the actual windshields that sit on the side of the stoves. So by using these, um, Tom have uh, omitted the need for those shelters there and you're not impeded by having to use smaller pots, particularly if you're cooking for bigger groups. We'll keep having a bit of a look around. You can see there's two burners on top here. They're very unique to these Hyperflame stoves. They're quite large burners, uh, about 11.5 BTU each, as I mentioned previously, or 22,000 BTU uh, total in the stove here. 
surrounded by the pot support there and a steel drip tray that features throughout here, nice and easy to clean. Moving around to the front of the stove, we can see we've got the piezo igniter here, so we don't need matches or anything to light this. There's a dial here and on the other side as well, another dial here for each of the burners and in between there, the latch to secure the stove, that's all metal latch there and a handle at the front here. Now this handle doesn't fold, it's a rigid handle that always sticks out. And just for the sake of it, we'll show you the bottom so that you can see what it looks like here. And this is all a metal base here as well and they're plastic feet on the corners here. These are attached when you buy it, you can't actually remove these feet here. And there's this little void here, which kind of almost looks like a battery pack and it. <laughs> it took us a little while to work out exactly what it was for, but when you buy the stove, the regulator comes stored in it like this. So when you pack it away in your car, you can pack the regulator in the base of the stove like that as well. One last thing I wanna show you on the outside before we fire things up is just how the latch works on the front here. This is, a, this is all metal, this latch here, and you've got this um, section here that's on the lid and that kind of works with a little clip in the um, back of the, the latch here. You pull that up, push it over the top of the lid there. It doesn't leap back down, uh, um, sort of lever back down again, and that locks the lid closed. So that's covered up on the features of the stove. What I want to do now is connect it up and fire it up for you so you can see how the flame looks and we'll also see how low we can get the simmer because the big question on this stove is how well does it simmer. So I'm going to attach a regulator in the side here again. Now when you're attaching all these gas fittings, it's always important to make sure you don't have any leaks in any of the connections. Another important point, we are lighting this inside here today. We're in a big space, but it's really important not to use um, LPG products in confined spaces. Make sure you've got ventilation so that you're clearing the byproducts of burning the gas. Now I've attached this on here. Ideally what I would do is use a spanner just to firmen that up and also use uh, soapy water for all the connections so I'm going to attach the hose into the regulator here as well and do it up. Once I've got all these connected up I would want to grab some soapy water or at least turn it on and make sure I can't smell or hear any gas leaking before we light anything or play with any flames. So I've now got the hose connected to the regulator which as we said always needs to be in the system. Let's go into this hose here because I'm going to use an LPG cylinder like this guy here. This is a 3.8 BSP fitting on the top there. I'm going to screw this onto here. It's an opposite thread. And this is about a 1.5 meter hose that you get with the stove here. We've got that done up firmly there. I've got it done up, up here firmly. I've got it done up in here firmly. I will test this with soapy water to make sure there's no, uh, no leaks, no bubbles coming up. I'm going to turn it on now, make sure I can't hear or smell any gas. I think we're pretty good and we're ready to light. So we'll come around to the front of the stove here now. Now we need to use a combination of both the piezo at this end here. So I'll have one end ready, hand ready to go up here. So we light it as soon as we turn the gas on. Then we'll have a look at the dial on this side here. We've got um, a, a white dot at one end and a flame at the other end. Turning it towards the flame is turning the, the gas on. As soon as I turn this around, we'll hear the gas start to hiss. We want to press our piezo igniter straight away. So we'll get going and we're lit. So that was only probably a sixth of a turn or a fifth of a turn there to get that going. Uh, if I turn that right around, I can hear it roar a little bit more and this actually keeps going right around, but it doesn't get any hotter. I can't hear it getting any hotter. So you don't need to keep turning it right around. You can literally work within the parameters of the little diagram here. So we can see that's on full bore there, so about 11,500 BTU coming out of that, um, or radiating from that burner there at the moment. And what I want to do is turn it back to show you how it might simmer. So I'm just going to carefully turn it back because there's not a lot of difference between off and full bore with this stove. So I'm just going to keep turning it back. You can see it's getting red hot in there at the moment. Uh, I'm going to keep turning, keep turning. Oh, there we go now. So it's just started to die down a little. I'll keep turning it back, so that's gone right back. There's still heat coming out of that now. It's just on. And I'd say that's, you, there's a fine adjustment between full bore and simmer, but that's almost off there at the moment. I can feel, I can put my hands this close and get a little bit of warmth out. I wouldn't be able to do that if it was on full bore. And then between a low simmer like that and off is, barely a couple of millimeters of turn. So you can certainly get the heat down low, you just don't have a large area of adjustment to get the heat down low. That's pretty much all the features of the stove. Um, and I did just want to show you that uh, the ability for it, obviously to, to cook really fast. It's a hot stove when it's turned up high and you can simmer, but it's just a really fine adjustment between off and full bore. 
Covering off on a couple of other things, just accessories that you can get with a stove. If you remove this windshield here, or one of these windshields here, you can use um, one of these guys here, which is a griddle plate. You can see you've got a griddle on top and a bit of a, a, um, a drip tray underneath there. They sit on top of here. They fit better one way than the other. So there we go, so that just sits in there. The um, burner sits within that little, um, little hole there. And then this sits on top, allows the, the fat and things to drip through and you've got a grill plate on there. Furthermore, there is a carry bag for the Hyperflame stove range, which is quite a good carry bag. It's padded on the sides here. Nice big carry handles and little loops on the side that allow you to attach these. I don't know how much I trust that, but you can carry the little gas bottles on the side there as well, if you like. It's pretty much all the features and accessories of the Hyperflame Fire Cadet stove from Coleman. It's a, 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 not, a stove that balances probably performance and weight and also it's cooking space really well and is, is a good setup for pretty much any family camping setup, uh, any family camping kit, I would say. You can grab online at snowies.com.au at our lowest prices every day. If you've got any questions, let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel, we'll send you all of our latest information. We'll check out some other stove videos like this one down here.